It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And coming up, it'll be no holds barred between AFC South rivals. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Coming up next. This is an all sports station production. The calendar may say autumn, but temperatures are still pretty sweltering here in North Florida. But the good news, the radar is clear. Still, hydration will be key today at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. But, Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. But meanwhile, for the Colts, it's been a pretty hard fall the last couple of years, from 11 wins in 2020 to just four a season ago. How do they get back on the right path? I think they've started back on the right path with the change in the coaching staff, but a lot of it, players already on the roster playing back to the levels we've seen before. Here's the punter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And off we go from Jacksonville. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time. And they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence of so many to have to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. This young man, he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 15 yards to start their first drive of the game. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. On first down, right back to ETN to about the 40-yard line. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. And he'll be brought down. Colts. Samson Abukum credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Had to get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. 40 yards on the punt, two on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and ten. The Colts offense set to go to work, and they're led by a guy who's bounced around a bit the last few years, hoping to find a home with Indianapolis, Gardner Minshew. Even though the Colts were quarterback to start the NFL draft, they wanted a veteran under center this season. They tapped Minshew as that guy. The mustache and the mullet are in the Circle City, and he is their starter. 
Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start out here with the option left. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. A throw over the middle, taken in. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Here's Minshew. And he is caught. And he is going to have a Colts first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. So the completion there, but Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him, because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. But that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through. And has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. This defense not budging back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. On fourth down, the Colts will call on Rigoberto Sanchez for the punt. Back deep for Jacksonville, the dangerous Jamal Agnew. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Lawrence now off the bootleg. Caught on the right side by Jones. Will go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. Now Lawrence to throw. And ETN going to have a Jags first down as we'll get this up past the 40. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. A little bit of finger pointing and heavy discussion going on in the defensive backfield. It's man coverage, but they leave a guy wide open. They've got to be counting their lucky stars that this ball was overthrown. Now a second and ten. Now Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I 
I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And yeah, this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. He got 29 yards that time. They go with the empty set there. Five receivers in the formation. Normally, you want to have a running back in the block, but in this case, he's lined up to the right, and he ends up getting the football. A lot of confusion calls defensively, and it turns into a big play. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. So the completion good for six yards at its second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. This second and four, as they've got it as we resume action. Running out of the gun with ETN. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. What an advantage having an elite guy to build a defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. That's caught, it's strange, the tight end. But he takes it inside the 10 to the eight before he's out of bounds. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. And they'll run with ETN. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Lawrence will throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that little partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Here's Lawrence to throw. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. The kick by McManus is good. And the Jaguars grab a 3 0 lead. Well, both teams kind of feeling each other out here. And now, after three drives, we have a score with that field goal. Yeah, they're still waiting for their breakout drive to come to them, right? They're using the playbook well. They're looking for that extra section that says touchdowns instead of field goals. But they'll take the three for now and try and get set up for more later. Mm -hmm. 
After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. This one a little slow to get cooking. Just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a first and 10. Minshew sets to throw. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. But it's going to be second down. Now Minshew. Excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's got Pierce. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A very solid gain of 27. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down back and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. They'll set up to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. As you know, so many things in the passing game are based on yardage. Sometimes it's just based on timing. And that's what we saw right there on that play. Third and three. Just get the ball right to the receiver. This is the hitch route. And tell us, what is the hitch route? Yeah, just take really one step like you're driving off the line of scrimmage. Get the defensive back on his heels. Get the ball out to the receiver. And he does the rest. And the Colts are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. And they'll try the option on first and goal. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Second and goal from inside the five. Taylor is into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. 
So, partner, it was a passing game that drove them down the field, but when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield, and he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units, they specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows his versatility and gets both done on this drive. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom sh Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Shaquille Leonard, the linebacker. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. Indy set to go on offense once more. But following the interception, they're set up nicely here. Already inside the red zone. Knocking on the door, if you will. First and ten. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Up the middle, here's Taylor. Tackle made by Foley Fadukasi, the former UConn Husky. But we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Now that's into the hands of Mo Ali Cox, the tight end. And he'll get two or three out of that one as that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. Got a man, it's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts touchdown. From 13 yards out, and the Colts are able to add on to that lead. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough, otherwise they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was capped off on the touchdown catch by Michael Pittman. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. 
And able to get this out to the 25. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. First down now, but that clock rolling. Looking to throw Lawrence. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. Second and ten. Here's Lawrence again. He'll drop that underneath DTN. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. And that's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Lawrence going to throw again. And it's knocked away and incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. Now Minshew on first and 10. That's caught. It's Josh Downs. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's a second and eight. They're going to look to throw. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. On the return, here's Agnew. They'll call it a punt of 44 yards. The return was for seven. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jaguars ready to go on offense for the final time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. A little over 20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. Defense is asleep. 
Now Lawrence. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Screenplay, here's ETN. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. For the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Lawrence. And that's caught inside the 35. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. And that goes as a gain of 37 on third down. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it. So on comes the field goal unit. The kick by McManus is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to six now. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot and they cash in with three. How about the one, two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone to our Creative Village studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw former rushing champ Jonathan Taylor be a big time factor in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Second half, ready to get underway. The Colts with a lead, and they will receive the football. McKenzie now from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. And the Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. A beautiful thing. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away, 
from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the plays we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. On second down, it's Taylor. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. Here's Minshew. Yeah, to the right sideline. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Agnew now to return. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and they will take over first and 10. Here comes the Jags offense now, time for their first possession of half number two. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going, so what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to, how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. And he'll manage only a couple here up to the 25. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 46 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Back to Taylor on first down. And powering through at the 35. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a few tackles. Gain some additional yardage. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 30-yard line. From the gun, Minshew to throw. 
Hits his target to tight end, Mo Ali cox And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be left with second and a couple. Off play action, it's Minshew. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So many offense want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Looking to throw. I had a man open, but he missed it, and it's incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, well, we've got third and five or less. We have to be able to convert, and I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point, and they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. They'll run for it. It's Taylor, and he is going to have a Colts first down. Boy, that was a tough couple of yards to pick up, but they convert on fourth and one. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. So this offense able to convert on fourth, and now a fresh set of downs here, first and ten. Again, it's Taylor. A gain of three, second down. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. So from the 17, here's second and seven. Quick throw into the hands of Pittman. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. Gay's kick is good, and that will extend their lead here to 17-6. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting three. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that can all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game, but as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he returns this to the 22. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Tackle made by Zaire Franklin. 
Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. From the 22 now, here's the second and nine. Now Lawrence to throw. A short throw to Ingram. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him, and, and what a lot of teams do, They'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game case in point right there here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today and he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky and that's a 48 yard punt with the coverage holding him to three on the return And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. And he will be taken down, but a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. To the right side, this is Taylor. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's a heck of an effort from Josh Allen getting in there defensively. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Out of the gun is Minshew. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 39. And now a stoppage, and it looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He was looking to get it to Jonathan Taylor there, and it's third down and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Minshew quickly completing it out wide. And he is going to have a Colts first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. That time the conversion comes courtesy of the RPO. And know what it did? It moved the sticks. Nice pickup on third down. Even better decision. Now to the right and complete to Pittman. 
Michael Pittman, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs. And if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Here's Lawrence. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Here's Lawrence to throw. He's going to pick up the first down and then some. And finally taken down at the 44-yard line. A big play that time on the catch and run. And it'll move the chains. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to the squad. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. That's just his second catch of the game. They wanted to keep him silent. They have kept him silent. Defensive football 101. Don't let the best player on offense beat you. Take him out of the game. They've done a great job of doing that. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. They're looking at third and a few inches. It's a throw again is Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. So the completion results there in nine yards, and they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. And that falls to the ground incomplete. 
Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? On third and one, it's Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Jaguars are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches... You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete passing we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still, some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the D. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked up by Juju Brents. And the Colts are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, I mean, field goals probably aren't going to cut it at this point. This was touchdown or bust, and unfortunately for them, it turned out to be bust. Yeah, they're feeling like they've got to force the issue here, maybe take some chances they wouldn't have earlier in the game. But give credit to this defense. They've really stood tall throughout, and they come up with the interception in the end zone. Now Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at the 20. He'll start with a give to Taylor, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he's going to be unable to get upfield as they take him down at the 21-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Third and nine here. Now Minshew, able to find the open man, that's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at him, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. This is second and eight. Oh, 
So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no point were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville.